this is a this is a special meeting of the Mansfield Downtown Partners Finance and Growth Committee uh, on October uh, 30th, 2024. So I'll call the meeting to order. Is there any public who wish to comment? We have pretty pretty significant things in the um, in the media at the end of the. Of, of the agenda, but nobody here to make comments on it. Okay, uh, the next item is approval of the August 21st, 2024 minutes. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion Moved to by approve. Shanine, but seconded by Mario. Any comments or corrections? All those in favor say aye, or raise your hand or do something. Aye. Brian, where are you on this? I'm actually, I don't believe I'm a member of this committee. I'm just sitting in and uh, watching today. Oh, okay. Uh, Steve, are you there? Yep, can you hear me? Yep, are you I, voting to approve the minutes? Yes, I am. Okay, then it's, Ryan, are you a voting member? I, I think I'm a voting member on this. Yes, so and too. I vote to approve. Okay, so we're unanimous on the approval. The next item is the review of the June 30th, 2024 financial reports. Now, this is the end of the year financial reports. And this is very, actually very interesting. We had a, a quite significant contribution to our balance, fund balance out of this, about $54,000. And um, I had thought maybe that would have come from uh, salary savings, but it hasn't. Uh, I think Cynthia must have left after June 30th rather than before it. But what we do have is a, a significant increase in donations, almost a $10,000 increase in donations and some other kinds of savings in some various places. Uh, Kathleen, do you want to speak to this? Um, yes, I guess I'm not sure where the donations that you mentioned are shown if you look at at uh, revenue um the revenues at those um and the budget what we budgeted was 13,000 and what we received was 22 almost 23,000 okay sorry i was looking at the wrong page <laughs> okay um so there's a significant increase in donations and of course we budgeted for a significant increase in payment by the town and the university, and we did receive that. Um, but I'm not sure that, that that would have accounted for the increase in fund balance because we certainly budgeted to use all of those. Now, there was a saving of about $30,000 in salaries and benefits. So um, it, it, I don't think that's that's, uh, Cynthia's leaving, but I'm not sure what it is. Kathleen, when did Cynthia leave the payroll? Her final day was April 27th. Oh, oh, so it would have shown up here. So that's part of what we're seeing there. Um, there was also some actual savings in benefits as a side issue there, and really significant $9,000 saving in purchase services. Um, so you guys have been very frugal this year, I suspect. Shamim, you have your hand up? Yeah, um, can you, Kathleen, clarify what the donation, is that all membership donation money? Or were there separate donations from new uh, tenants? I'm not 100% sure. I um, can check that for you if you bear with me. We don't need to stop the discussion for now. If you want to keep moving along, that could be followed up with later. Well, in any case, those were the major observations I had that we we were able to put 
significantly more money into our fund balance, which is kind of nice since we've been eating away at fund balance in past years. I think that um, is all membership fees. Um, well, I'm looking here on that um, 270 fund program analysis mm -hmm. and the revenues. Because didn't you increase the rev um, the fee for, but that wouldn't be donation. Yeah, no, forget the, that. The fees for uh, for the festival, is that what you meant? Um, I thought you had increased the fees for the summer concert, uh, you know, for performers. Was it the insurance? Um, no, we we pay the performers to be part of the festival, but at the festival. Not we... for the festival, uh, for in general, when people want to book the square. Oh, okay. You know, we did not, we did not end up increasing that. Uh, the board um, chose to keep the fees the same. Um, but in looking at what we brought in for our membership, we, I'm pretty sure this is what this all um, counts for. So I have over 14,650 from our business members um and another 7550 from individuals which is 22200 so that would there may have been some extraneous you know donation to come up with that other $75 or 775 Steve you have your hand up Yeah I thought Kyle was able to get some uh, larger donations either out of the property owners or one of the businesses. I thought that was this past year. Yes, we did have um, significant contributions from our property owners and some of our businesses, but most of that went into our event support. So it would not be re um, reflected in the uh, general budget of the partnership. So that's what you see under things like the spring and summer events. We didn't used to have a budget there, or I should say we didn't used to have any money there. Um, the money from the property owners and our major business partners covered the events this year. So um, bike tour, summer stroll, summer concerts, um, winter welcome, Everything, basically everything except for the festival, which we had separate uh, fundraising effort for, was covered by the contributions from the, the property owners and the major business partners. Um, we do have some extra money left over because when we made the plan, we were fully staffed and thought we might expand our offerings. But with the departure of the event coordinator and then the executive director, we just kept the schedule that we as thought was manageable. Yes, um, could you explain what purchase services would be? Like give us a couple examples. Um, I think that includes things like our, you know what, I'm not totally sure. I, would that sorry. include the lawyer? No, I think it could actually, which I know we, we did not spend as much as we, um had budgeted i think so i'm i'm sorry for the confusion on my the 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 categories don't match what i have from <laughs> uh, you just cut yourself off right. <laughs> what we um the way that we track it internally those have not always been consistent with the way that finance labels things so i'm just trying to make sure that i'm saying the right thing did, um, did we buy a member a membership uh tracking program yes we have a subscription now to a program called maestro that we pay um a monthly fee for rosemary has been working on building that database for us we have um but i I'm not 100% sure if that goes under purchase services or something else. Um, 
Well, there is professional and technical. That's probably where the attorney goes and purchase services, maybe where the subscriptions go. And then there's supplies and services. Uh, these these categories need definitions, and I'm sure that uh, that the finance department has definitions for them. It's just confusing at the moment. Yeah, I think what I can do for the next meeting is, you know, the finance stuff was really helpful in, in, in helping me with these um, reports and making some of the changes we talked about. But I realized that I did not ask about matching like when we have our budget, we have different codes and different terms for these. And these, they're not, I'm realizing they're not consistent. <laughs> so, it would make a great deal of sense to make them consistent, however. Yeah, I will um, work on that for the next time we get one of our quarterly reports so that we can, I can say with confidence what each of these things are because I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, Thank you, Mario. Uh, Brian? Now I'm confused. <laughs> now uh, we're saying that uh, we received donations from tenants and and uh, and business owners or property owners uh, at the Mansell Downtown Partnership. And is that shown and tracked in the financials that are different line item, or we? Uh, I'm, I'm confused that we would have two pools of money for donations. One we take out for events and then another for other reasons by other donors. What what differentiates differentiates between me donating and uh, a business owner donating and what pot of money that goes into? My guess is that it depends on the pot of money the donation is aimed at. If it's aimed at our general operating expenses, it goes into one place. If it's if it's aimed at funding a particular concert, it would go into that pot of money. Is there a reason why we would have to separate that and not just keep that yes. one pot of money? Yes, because we tell the donor you are supporting the third movie or you are supporting supporting this band as opposed to contributing to the overall functioning of the agency. I'm still slightly confused, but uh, you're going to be working some of this out for the next meeting, I guess you just said. Some of this, yes. Yeah, okay. But um, I'm not sure that I'm not sure that the changes that I'm talking about will deal with the concerns that you are raising, because when we fundraise for very specific to fund very specific events, we keep that money separate from the fundraising that goes into our general operating budget. Okay, I'll take a closer look. Thank you. Because that allows us to to say this is a you know to to have a a brochure that says um, um, M T Bank has supported the movie series, right? Rather than M T Bank is supporting the downtown partnership, they can put their name on that particular brochure. Just to hop in here real quick, and I apologize, I'm in the car with a four-year-old, so there might be some background noise, but I think one of the terms that sometimes gets thrown around, like an accounting speak, uh, along the lines of what the mayor is describing, is uh, something called a restricted gift. So when a yes. gift is made, that that's a term that's used to say that it's associated with a specific defined you know, function, project, whatever, and as the mayor said, the, the spirit and intent when the gift was solicited and or offered um, was very express, you know, about what, what it was to be used for as opposed to just, I want to support this organization overall and make an annual donation of X amount that can be used, you know, basically to support any, any operating function you want. Yeah. I mean, a donor might say, I don't want to pay a salary, but I'm perfectly willing to put up a movie. Makes sense. All right. Is there anything else about these? this report that people would have questions about that we need to understand before we refer it to the full board? All right, then if nobody has questions, then there's a motion in order. Uh, and the motion is 
uh, to recommend to the board of directors that they approve the June 30th, 2024 financial reports. Does somebody like to make that motion? I thought you mean you were going to do it, but uh, I would <laughs> I would recommend to the board uh, exactly what it is that Tony just mentioned because I don't have it up right now. Okay. And it's, I will second it. All right. Moved by Mario, seconded by Shamim to recommend to the board of directors that they approve the January June 30th, 2024 financial reports. Is uh, any further comment on this? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Aye. Okay, and Steve signals yes, too. So we're unanimous. All right, so about financial reports, then from for the future that uh, Kathleen will attempt to make our own expenditure records um, coincide with the categories and terms that are used by the town so that there is clarity and maybe she can get some definitions of some of these categories so that when we ask the question we'll know what the answer means all right the next oh don't do that the next item on our agenda wait a minute that's it um we have uh, number five wait a minute let's Hang on. Ah, process for drafting the 2526 budget. So the first thing I will say is that um, there will be a recommendation that goes to the board this afternoon that Mario take over this chairmanship, which I am delighted that he will. I will remain on the committee. Um, but Mario, thank you very much for your willingness to do this. And let me ask you what you would like to see in your uh, in the process for drafting our next budget, since you'll be in charge. Well, I think it's going to be more uh, closely related to the communication aspect of you know between finance director, between yourself, Ryan, Kathleen, um, as to what we're looking for something so simple as looking at the budget now and having it coordinate with what the finance director or what the finance department has on the uh the sheet uh definitely is a start so whether it's a legend whether it's something that sort of kind of coincides with what it is that we're looking at so you know it sort of prevents or mitigates the questions uh so much kathleen what do you see as our schedule well the notes that i received um and i hadn't previously been involved in the budget process so um i just my understanding is that it goes to this committee first they um hash it out and then at some point refer it to the board then the board reviews it um and i have a note that this starts in october um with figuring out the contributions from the town and Yukon, which are usually matched. Um, and then from there on, you know, so, but this, I think this is an maybe going to be a, an interesting year because we don't know what the staffing's going to be exactly. Um, so I kind of just wanted to get an idea from this group what you have thought worked well in the past or what you would like to see for this year in terms of what information I can provide you and also the formatting. Um, you know, I know we went through the reports at the last meeting and now um, we have some more changes to do to those. So I just wanted to get this started because um, we have to have all of our, my understanding is the partnership finalizes its budget ahead of the town's budget process, which usually starts in early winter. The, 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 town's pro, the, the town's process is that the departments submit their budget proposals to finance during December to January, right? Ryan, I, correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, after then the 
uh, finance department and the town manager work out what they want the town's budget to be. Uh, that comes to the council at the end of March. Um, so that there's always time for the downtown partnership to uh, amend or revise what it's doing. The question that I have really is um, what are the plans for the executive director and the staff? Ryan, do you have any sense of where, of when UConn and the town will make these recommendations to the council? Well, so as far as the, um, the executive director position goes, obviously there's information in the, uh, the board packet for the, the regular board meeting that starts at five relative to an updated job description. Um, I believe the, the draft job ad also is included, which, which reflects um, proposed upgrade in the, the, the pay range or the pay plan for the, for the position. And so basically as soon as the, um, the board of directors uh, acts on uh, accepting our sort of ad hoc working groups recommendation relative to updating those things, then we have a position that can be formally advertised and we can commence in earnest with recruitment. And I think, you know, this is going to be like we, we tend to do for a lot of positions open until filled. Um, and I, I guess the last thing I would say on it is, you know, we're just recognizing that um, it's essentially early November. We were practically in early November. And so uh, the month of December for a variety of reasons, you know, in terms of just that, that time between Thanksgiving and the, and the end of the calendar year is historically not, you know, the best time to be recruiting and or interviewing candidates. So I think in all likelihood, the recruitment is going to extend into the, the early portion of, 25. So I would certainly hope that we have a a new director identified, perhaps even started um, in the the early spring or late winter, early spring, so that by the rare right on the time the partnership's budget um, is finalized, we we know exactly who's who's coming on board, and and before then we know exactly you know what the salary for that individual will be as well. But I agree with what Kathleen was saying. I guess I thought it was November, maybe not October that the parties got together the town and um and you kind of hash out what the annual contribution that year was going to be so maybe we're a little behind but we will probably want to get that meeting together in november and ryan do you anticipate any significant increases or decreases in that number apologies if my signal starts to cut out i'm in a, uh, not the best area right now it's about a five minute yep yeah, sorry, buddy. I'm talking. One second. Um, yeah, so I think for the coming year, uh, for the the next fiscal year, um, I don't necessarily see uh, substantial budgetary changes coming into play. I think it'll be a many months long process involving the new director as we talk about the future of the organization and the or any uh, organizational realignment and how staffing needs to be adjusted to reflect that that those budget, those changes would be sort of hardwired into future operating budgets. So um, I don't necessarily see see there being any major shifts in staffing or anything that would, uh, you know, basically have major operating budget impacts for this next coming budget year. But certainly it's a little bit of an empty canvas for FY27 and, and beyond. And then and obviously we just want to get a new director in place to help inform that that process so the assumption is that for the current year which ends in july in the end of june we will have an executive director in place a person who currently act the uh, kathleen's traditional position and one or two um administrative assistants of some sort yeah, so I guess what I would say is that, you know, and, and this is where, you know, we want to get our next director in place so that they can help inform this based on their their own perception of what's needed. But we have a vacant events coordinator position, and I think there's, I don't want to get too far down this rabbit hole, but I think, you know, there have been a number of discussions that have been had about, everybody recognizes that we want to have 
amazing, robust series of downtown events, both recurring events and, and the sort of events that happen once a year. Um, but I think there's a, a real discussion to be had about the best way to tackle that, whether it be through professional staffing or another means. And so before we backfill an events coordinator position, I think we want to take a really holistic view of a uh, more global view of, you know, what, what, what different functions we're trying to accomplish, both in terms of events, but also what I would call, I guess, downtown operations. And um, Cynthia, historically, as the director, spent an awful lot of time interfacing directly with Laz and doing a lot of nitty gritty downtown operation stuff that I think we periodically or annually discussed with her that, you know, it's important work, but it's not necessarily the work we want the executive director, the person doing the strategic sort of visioning work to be spending as much time on. So I think we want to have ultimately have a discussion about uh, how best to staff to meet all the needs and make sure that the next director uh, has their focus on on organizational growth and development. Um, okay, so there doesn't seem to be an inclination to make substantial changes in the structure of the organization now. So the, the budget process, we can probably build on what we have and, and make in minor incremental changes. Um, we're not talking that. about reworking a whole new budget. I think the FY26 budget, there might be, to use your word, incremental uh, directional change that will be more fully implemented beginning in FY27. Uh, mm -hmm. so not, there won't be any kind of gradual, perhaps, pivot or departure from past budgets, but it, I, I think it would be more phased, if you will. All right. So... I think, Kathleen, that what you need to what we we need to do is to see a first draft of a budget uh, sometime in November, uh, maybe our next meeting. And Mario, I think you're going to be in charge of that. Um, I'll be around. I'm not going to disappear, but I'll be around. Um, that that and that that's a very um, Oh, that's an opening shot, right? That's the first time you present a budget to anybody, and it will go to the to the town finance people, or to the board, and then to the finance people. And then we have lots of time between then and the town meeting in May to make actual adjustments, depending on what happens with our job search. Okay, so I have. Um... The next meeting with this group as November 20th. Um, so what I can do is start a draft. Um, I will also try to make sure that all of our terms are consistent between <laughs> all of our different charts here. So um, in terms of what this group would like to see, is it, would you, just want a spreadsheet. Do you want supporting documents or um, past budgets to compare to or anything like that? Well, the, the document usually includes the prior budget year. Well, it usually includes three years. It includes the last completed year. It includes where we are in the current budget year. And it incurred, and then the projection for the next year. Okay, and I saw Ryan or somebody in the chat offered to help, so I will take them up on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the finance can help can help you with this one. Okay. Yeah, that's Ryan offered. It's, it's going to be a moving target because we have no idea what's going to happen with the job search. Well, to be honest, one thing I haven't totally understood, um, I, I think what, because the town and Yukon agree to a, a contribution, what's reflected in the town's budget is just a single line. Um, 
of their contribution, not, you know, well, all the integrity that. There have always there have been two lines in recent years: the basic contribution yeah. and the forty thousand for economic development, and that may change. Depending that on may change, job. but that would be the type of change that I would see is more of a change probably in FY twenty seven. All right. So, do you have instructions? Are you comfortable on where you have to go? Yes, I did. I'm struggling with the mute button today, but other than that, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what's going on um yes i think i understand and um and i have my tasks for the two different pieces here so okay is there now this is a special meeting so we can't amend the agenda uh is there anything in the packet that you would wish to comment on i will say we've had a number of new businesses opening up and that's really kind of nice particularly renovation and new business at the southern end of town. So, and, and this is an area where, where if we expand the reach of the executive director to be uh, townwide, this is, this would really have involved Cynthia in a much more intense way. I don't know whether Kathleen, whether you have been involved with these new businesses or not. Um, I some of them yeah um but i don't know if this is drifting off into a yes topic off the agenda. exactly so could, could you clarify that uh tony um the executive director um working town wide is that the organizational change that i hear well, that, was about? that yeah that's the forty thousand dollars for economic development that that is not limited to store center. Correct. Now, acting as the executive director to the Mansell Downtown Partnership, or something separate uh, for the economic development of the town of Mansfield. For well, the forty thousand dollars, which pays for a portion of the executive director's time to speak, do economic development for the town, which is not limited to store center. Okay. Downtown stores. Downtown stores. Okay. Um, <laughs> just as another comment, I I happened to I worked the polls yet yesterday from seven thirty till two, and the person I was sitting next to is Andre Benetton, who is the owner and uh, and new new owner and reconstructioner reconstructor of the general store in Mansfield Center. So that was very interesting. And um, I'm hoping we can get him a little more engaged in town matters. I would just say, and I guess, well, in my capacity as town manager, but just a personal perspective, uh, just how impressed uh, I think we should all be with the investment that he's made in the, the general store building just a tremendous transformation and uh you know not not everybody who purchased a property like that i think would have demonstrated the level of investment and not just monetary investment but in in keeping you know with the historic uh, characteristics of the building i just think he really should be applauded and it's an exciting new beginning for that building yep and there will be a ribbon cutting and we will be invited i made sure i i agree with that great job all right, so I think a motion to adjourn is in order. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second, second that. Oh, second did, was that seconded by Steve? Okay, yep. all, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Goodbye. See you at the board meeting in half an hour, or in 20 minutes. <laughs>